Glory to God. Happy Blessed New Year 2018 to each and every one of you. I want to welcome you today to this special broadcast where we will be sharing a special prophetic word for 2018. As we begin to go into the word of God today, let us pray. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer today that God would meet each one of us at the point of our need, whether it be spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, and in every single area, that God will truly meet us at the point of our need, whatever that need might be. Dear kind Heavenly Father, as we come this day, we come in the mighty and in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And as we come this day, kind Heavenly Father, we come and worship you. We praise you, kind Heavenly Father, in the beauty of your holiness. We thank you, kind Heavenly Father, for your good, your goodness, for your tender mercies, your amazing grace, for your love, your kindnesses, for your fidelity and faithfulness unto us, Lord God. We thank you, kind Heavenly Father, this day that you loved us so much, that you gave your one and only begotten Son for us, that as we have believed on you, Lord Jesus Christ, we would not perish, but we would have everlasting life. And for this, we're so grateful to you, Lord God Almighty. We praise you for who you are in our lives. And Lord Jesus, you told us, you said that you would, when you would, you would not leave us comfortless, but you told us, Lord Jesus, that you would send us a comforter. And we thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for being that one who is the Paracletos, the one who comes alongside of us and inside of us to empower us to lead a victorious and overcoming life in Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord God Almighty, I worship you today and praise you in the very beauty of your holiness, thanking you for your good, your goodness, thanking you for your tender mercies and for your amazing grace. There is truly no one, not anywhere, that is likened unto you, Lord God. And I'm eternally grateful to you, Lord God, for all of your manifold blessings. And Father, as I come today, I come in obedience to you and your word. For you told us to come boldly to your throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, Lord God, and then that we may also obtain the grace that we need in times of need or in time of trouble. So as we come this day, and I come this day, kind Heavenly Father, I come, Father God, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I come this day to pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl that will listen, Lord God, to this particular broadcast message, Lord God to this word that you've laid upon my heart by your precious Holy Spirit. And so as I come this day, kind Heavenly Father, I lift up each one, Father God. Father God, first and foremost, Lord God, I pray for each one spiritually. That Lord God, even now that you would take each one higher in you and deeper in you. That you, Lord God, would continue to open the eyes of each one of our understanding. That you would give each one of us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, your word. Father God, of your purpose, your plan, your destiny for each one of our lives. In the mighty and in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And that, Lord God, you would just draw us near unto thee. Lord, we thank you and praise you, Father God. We desire to do your will. Let your kingdom come. Let nothing but the very center of your will be done in each one of our lives. Father, I pray, Lord God, that we will not be to the left of your will or to the right of your will. But Lord, I pray, Lord God, let your kingdom come. Let the very center of your will be done in my life and each one of our lives, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And then, Father God, I come to pray today, Lord God, even for those, Lord God, who may be going through in their body in a physical way, Lord God. For those of you who are listening to this particular broadcast, if you're going through in your body, lay your hands on your body, even if you just have to lay your hands on your stomach. There's somebody that I'm even praying for right now. You may be having some problems at the top of your stomach right now. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak to all weakness, sickness, disease, infirmity, pain, and discomfort in each one of our bodies, in each of your bodies, from the top of your head, the top of our head, to the very soles of our feet. Father God, you told us in your word that if we would resist the devil, he would flee from us. We saw that you would rebuke that thing and it would have to leave. So we bind, we rebuke, we forbid, we arrest and command all weakness, sickness, disease, infirmity, pain, and discomfort to leave from our bodies. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I bind and break the power in the name of the Lord Jesus, all legions of hindering spirits that would try to hinder a person in their bodies to keep them from going forth in you, Father God, and in all that you call them to. And I lay hold to and summons and call forth 
healing, wholeness, wellness, soundness, recreative miracles, and total recovery to their body. I say to you this day, not only lay your hands on your stomach, but lay your hands as a point of contact on whatever you're listening to, this listening device. And I say in Jesus' name, be healed. Be whole, be well, be sound from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in the name of the Lord Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, be healed, be whole, be well and sound. And then, Father God, I come and lift up each one that may be going through in the financial area. Financially, Lord God, even now I come against and stand against and rebuke, forbid and arrest all poverty, lack, want and not enough, all insufficiency, I bind and break the power of it from over each one of our lives in obedience to you and your word, and I summons, I call forth and make a withdrawal from that which you've already put on deposit for us, I lay hold to prosperity, plenty, abundance, and more than enough, blessed to be a blessing, for Father, you said you give us that power to get wealth, that your covenant may be confirmed as you've established it. Lord God, that your covenant may be confirmed and established as you swore to us as it is this day in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Oh Lord, bless them indeed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Empower each one to prosper, to excel to the highest place, to have an abundant increase in favors that they may be blessed to be a blessing unto others. And then, kind Heavenly Father, I just pray even this day, Lord God, that you would bless ones in the social, socially and emotionally, Lord God. Oh, Father God, you're the one that specializes in healing a broken heart. You specialize in that. If there's somebody who's going through a heartbreak and a heartache, Lord God, from the loss of a loved one, from the loss, Lord God, of a, even friendship, from the loss of, of whatever it is that they may be, their heart may be breaking because of it. Lord, I ask, Lord God, you specialize in comforting us like nobody else can do it. Comfort that person's heart. Comfort them, Lord God, with your peace and with your strength, Lord God. Give them the wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding that you would have to, them to know and to have, Father God. And give them the peace of heart and mind. Lord God, your peace is the peace that will mount guard our heart and mind, even now through you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you are the Prince of Peace. So I ask you, Lord God, for that one that is listening, even tonight and maybe years from now, Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you would just bless them and strengthen them and give them peace of heart and give them peace of mind, for you comfort like nobody else can do it. And then, Father, I ask that you would bless the ones and, and touch the ones, Lord God, that may be going through a bondage and a habit in their lives, something that has them bound, Lord God. Oh, Father God, whether it be by drugs or alcohol or perverse lifestyle, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak to every bondage, every habit. I bind and break the power of it from over that person. Yes, you lay your hands on that, on your device, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for you this day, and I bind and break the power in the name. I feel the anointing, even as I'm doing so now. I bind and break the power of every bondage, every habit, everything that would have you bound in any way, shape, or form, in the name of the Lord Jesus. For Father, you said the word. Oh, Lord Jesus, you said that whom the Son is set free is free indeed. They're free indeed, Lord God. You came that we might have freedom to set that liberty them that are captives to whatever might be captivating them, Father God. In the name of the Lord Jesus are captivating us. We know that we can come to you, Lord God. And you're the one that gives us freedom in every area. And we love you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And then I just pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl that you would just touch them, strengthen them in every area and need each person at the very point of their need, whatever that need might be in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And then, Father God, because I rely and lean on to you, to you, even now, I look to you and to your precious Holy Spirit in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. I ask, Lord God, that you would minister through me with clarity, with accuracy, with simplicity, and with a good understanding, Father God. And that you would minister even to me, through me, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, I give you praise, I give you thanks, and I give you honor. Then I ask you to let us hear with clarity. Let us hear your word with clarity accuracy, simplicity, and with a very good understanding. And I give you praise and glory and honor in advance in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. I want to come this day as uh, I come to share with this prophetic word that God had given me for 2018. I want to tell you how it kind of came into being. I wasn't in particular looking for a prophetic word from the Lord because he gives it to me. He drops it in my spirit, what he wants me to know and to to hear. Even back, I remember back in 1990, right before 1990 came into being, uh, 
I heard the Lord tell me that the winds of change were blowing. And and he said that you got 10 is the number for increase and 9 is the number for the Holy Ghost. And one of the things that the Holy Ghost would be equated with is with the wind. He's like a rushing mighty wind. And he proclaimed into my spirit at that time, the winds of change were blowing. So I began to minister as God began to tell me before the new year came in. I was ministering in places in Los Angeles and in New York and other places about the winds of change were blowing. And so then when, when the new year came in in 1990 in particular, that particular year, when the 1990 came in, on the headline of the paper in New York, I was in New York and New Jersey, it said the winds of change were blowing. I said, oh, glory to God. And it was at the same time that that Berlin Wall came down. It was at that same time that they, the people gained the freedom that that Berlin Wall came down. The winds of change were blowing. And I thank God for that word. Last year, the Lord gave me another word. The Lord gave me a word for 2017. He said that we would be doers of the word and not be only hearers only of the word. He said that faith without corresponding actions were dead, that we got to walk in what we know for 2017 in order for us to make it through. We have to walk in what we know, not just be hearers of the word, but we must put into action. And sometimes it, it's easy to go take a Tylenol or Advil or, or leave or whatever your, your medication of choice is. It's easy to go to physicians. Now, if you happen to be able to be blessed to have a, uh, um, a, 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 what do you call that when you go to the doctor to be able to have, uh, so, so you can, a plan that you can go to the doctor. That's a blessing to many people. What, what the, the thing that happens is, and I believe that medicine, some medicines, not all, but some medicines and doctors and nurses and technicians are an expression of God's mercy and of his grace. I thank, I thank the Lord for that. I really do praise him for that. However, we must understand that we have been given the word of God and God has told us what specifically to do. He tells us in, in, in Mark 11, he said, have faith in God. In verse 22, and then he goes into 23, he said, if you would speak to that mountain and say, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and will not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things that you say will come to pass, you'll have whatsoever you say it. For whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And he said, but if you have all against anyone, now forgive them. So that your father in heaven shall also be able to forgive you. So there are things that all throughout the word, there are things that God gives us, that he gives us instructions. And he wants us to be doers. He wants us to be doers of his word and not just hearers only. That's the word he gave for 2017. He also had given that word that faith without corresponding actions is dead. Faith without works is dead. If we say we have faith and we don't step out on that faith, or we don't step out on that word, believing that God is going to do. Even one stepping out is resting, knowing that God has already got it done. Lord, I thank you. You're the healer in the land. I thank you, Lord God. I lay hold to healing, health, wholeness, soundness, wellness, recreated miracles, and total recovery in my body. I'm going to stand on that word, and I'm going to rest after I do it because I know that you're already there. You, the word of God says, the word of God says in Psalms 91, that as we live and dwell and make our home in the secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under the safety shadow of the Almighty. So we, we learned last year, the word he gave me was to, to encourage ones during the year of 2017 to be doers of the word, not hearers only, and to know that faith without corresponding actions is dead. So as the time came on, I hadn't heard anything basically. Uh, our word had not dropped down in my spirit. I had not heard anything special for 2018. I know that eight is always the number of new beginnings. I know that nine, uh, 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 18 is pr pr uh, comprised of two times nine. And nine is for the number for the Holy Spirit. There are nine fruit of the Spirit, nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So in 18 is two times nine. Two is the number for console. So I know that that in a, there's a certain move of the Holy Spirit is going to take place during that time. But I had not got a firm word. I had not, and I, and I had not even gone and said, "Okay, Lord, give me a word for 2018." Because I know if He has it, He'll He'll if He wants me to have it, He'll give it to me. Well, the process began, and I was uh, a few days ago. I was sitting outside of Kroger's waiting on my daughter Amber, and as I opened my Bible. Uh, I opened my Bible and Genesis 24 verse 35 stood out to me. If you have your Bibles, 
Turn to Genesis, the 24th chapter and the 35th verse. And the 35th verse says, And the Lord had blessed my master greatly. Let me go back. And the Lord had blessed my master greatly. And he has become great. And he had given him flocks and herd, herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. I want to go back to that. And he had given him flocks and herds, and silver and gold, and men servants, maid servants, and camels and asses. The word says, Then the Lord has blessed my master greatly. I remember this, this particular chapter because when Abraham wanted his son to have a wife, he sent his servant before him. And he had reached his destination and was telling them these words, And the Lord has blessed my master greatly. The Lord. And what stood out to me is, And the Lord has blessed my master greatly and he has become great and he who is the he the lord have given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses then i went to the beginning of chapter 24 to begin to read i wanted to read the whole chapter and when i got there i got stuck again because here i am in verse one and it said and abraham was old and well stricken in age and this is what it said and the Lord hath blessed Abraham in all things. And the Lord, and the Lord hath blessed Abraham in all things. Here it says, the Lord hath blessed my master greatly in verse 35, and he has become great. Here it says, and the Lord hath blessed Abraham in all things. In one translation it says, God had blessed Abraham in all things in every way. I remember reading in Genesis 13, 1 and 2. Why I read about Abraham. And I went to Genesis 13, 1 and 2. And it says, And Abraham went out of, up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. He had his nephew Lot with him. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Abraham was very rich, it said. Then it came across my spirit, looked like Psalms 112, verses 1 through 3, just stood out in my spirit. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Verse 2 of Psalms 112 says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And then verse 3 stood out to me again. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. And by this time, my daughter was coming out. And look like, I don't want to say, want to say this, it, it seemed like, uh, even though I read Psalms 112 many, many times, it seemed like verse 3 just stood out. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. I, I could remember that the word of God says that we are of the seed of Abraham, and that we're blessed with faithful Abraham through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior in Galatians. So I went on and we came on home. And I went on about my daily business, taking care of my business that I needed to do that day. And I went on to bed that night after I had prayed. And that night around 3 a.m. I woke up and could not go back to sleep. And the Lord began to minister to my heart that he was giving me a word for 2018 to give to his people. And that word that he gave me is, God wants his people to be blessed, rich in all things, and in every way. I'm going to say that again. God wants his people to be blessed, rich in all things, and in every way. Somebody might listen to this as, oh, Lord, here she goes with this prosperity message. But God gave me this word. And the thing that, 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 uh, if I could, if you could remember, if somebody listened last year, some of you may have, some of you may not have. And you might say, well, you know, I've been listening to all the major ministers and I've not heard not one single person say what you're saying. But you remember that God's mode of operation is a little bit different than ours. When God ministers a word unto our hearts, he will many times give us from different aspects are different facets of what he's doing. When he began to give the, the Gospels, he could have given just one Gospel, 
one, one writer of the gospel. But there were four writers of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you'll remember these about Matthew, remember that Matthew wrote about Jesus as the king, the Messiah who was to come into the world. He gave a lot of genealogies and, and, and to prove that this is true. Jesus was truly the Messiah, the, the, the soon coming king, the king that had been prophesied who would come into the world. Matthew went into all those genealogies because he was showing Jesus as the king, the Messiah. But remember, God showed through the book of Mark, Jesus as the servant, who went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil, who went about healing, uh, doing good, he went about doing good, and healing all that were sick of the, are uh, uh, sick of the devil, or uh, that had been plagued by the devil. And remember, when you begin to look at the book of Mark, Mark, in particular, he, he don't give a whole bunch of gene genealogies. He begins to go right into the miracles of Jesus Christ because he was showing Jesus as the servant. Then if you look and you look in the book of Luke, Luke was the one who began to show Jesus as the man. As Jesus Christ, the man who had to depend on God, the Father, to, have to de depend on the Father in prayer. He had to depend on the Father by the precious Holy Ghost. And he began to show the humanity of Jesus. Jesus as the man. Remember, Matthew showed Jesus as the king, that Messiah who was to come. Mark showed him as the servant who went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. Luke showed him as the man who had to depend on God through prayer. As a matter of fact, again, you know that in, in Luke, it shows more times of the times when Jesus prayed and what happened after he prayed. When he prayed and what happened, do a reference on that. See each time that Jesus prayed in Luke. And then after he prayed in Luke, watch and see what happened each time that he prayed. And then John showed Jesus as very God himself. God who became a human being, who came in the flesh. He says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in John 1.1. 1, 1. And then in John 1.14 it says, and the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. So somebody might say. Well you know I, 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 I like Mark's gospel. But God gave. Or somebody might say. I like Luke's gospel. Or I like John's gospel. Best. But God gave four different aspects. Or four different aspects. Or four different writers. What he wanted them to know. And to give to the body of Christ as good news, as the gospel. Well, today the word that the Lord gave me is a word he gave for me. If you're listening, this is a tailor-made message. I told you last year how when God got ready to write to the seven churches of Asia, he gave each particular church in Revelations, he gave each one of them a tailor-made message for tailor-made people. I love my, my brother, Pastor Mark, and, and my uh, cousin, Pastor Paul. Their suits look like they are tailor-made on them. And you can tell my brother is very tall. And so I know that he has to have certain things done in order for his suits to look so tailor-made on him. And so when we look at, at God, God will give a tailor-made message for a tailor-made people. And so if you're listening today, this message I believe has been tailor-made just for you. God wants you to know and us to know that he wants us to be blessed and rich in all things. And in every way. Not just some things. In all things. And in every way. So it's important that we remember in 2018. That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Today. And forever. As God wants us to. As he blessed with Abraham. And you can remember. That's why it's so important when we get in the word. In 2 Timothy 3.16. Where it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished under every good work. God gives his word and it's for us to learn. He gave us that scripture back in Genesis to see that if he blessed, he, he, if he blessed Abraham, made Abraham rich, he blessed him in all things and in every way, he made him great. Glory to God. He blessed Abraham. And he said through Abraham 
all nations of the world would be blessed. We're blessed like faithful Abraham to be a blessing unto others. And so when we look back through the word of God, we must understand that God will give that word so that we can see this is his character. This is his nature. I know that when I began, as he began to give me this word, he gave me uh, that not only is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. In John 10 and verse 10, the word of God says the thief. Cometh not before to steal and kill and to destroy. But why did Jesus come? Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Do you know God wants you to have life and life more abundantly? And as I pray and I pray each day, the word of God says that we ought to pray for those in leadership and those in authority for everyone so that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life and all godliness and holiness and honesty. I know that there the word talks about that in this world we're going to have tribulations. But he said, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. We know that there are going to be persecutions that come. But God also tells us what to do and how to do when those persecutions come. And then we must remember it. I don't care what anybody t says to how God don't want you to do this or God don't want you to have that or, or, or all of this. But we want you to, God wants you to know. That he wants to be able that you be blessed in every, in all things and in every way. Look at Luke 4 and verse 18 and 19 with me. The word of God says, Jesus was speaking here, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. He was reading from an Old Testament passage in Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The first thing that Jesus had in that one statement as he came to preach the gospel to the poor. I can hear my pastor, Pastor Robinson, said, and what would he preach to the poor? He came to preach to the poor. You don't have to be poor anymore. He came to preach the gospel is good news, good news to the poor, that God wants to bless you. I don't care how it may look to us in the financial, just like you have uh, symptoms that come up in your body where, where there may be cold symptoms or or, or, or pains or discomfort that come in your body. There are symptoms that come up in our financial area. There are symptoms that may look like that you're insufficient, poverty, lack, one, not enough. It may look like it's just, just, just coming in. But God said, so I got some good news for you. I want you to be blessed in every way, in all things, and in every way. And Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. Remember, he said that. He said, He came to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Oh, he specializes in that. I call God our specialist. He specializes in preaching the gospel, the good news to the poor. He sent, he said, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance. Oh, if you're bound, deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind. That's a part of healing. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. He, he sets at liberty them that are bruised and hurt. One of my very first, uh, favorite scriptures is that a bruised reed will he not break, nor a smoking flax will he put out. When you're bruised, he said, I'm not going to break you when you're bruised. And if you've got a little flame left, a little expectation left, I'm not going to put your expectation out. I'm going to fan that hope so that it'll burn bright like a burning fire, knowing that I, I want you to be blessed in all things and in every area. And by the way, when when uh, he gave me the messages that night, he said, look up the word rich in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And I was kind of surprised to see that that word rich is kabod, is kabod for the glory of God. It also means very wealthy on one in one aspect, but it is also the glory, all that God is, all that he has, he gives to us. That's That's through Jesus Christ, our Savior, because when Jesus came, it said he was full of glory. He was full of glory. That's the Jesus we serve. He, he went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So we see here that he came that, 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 that we might have life. He came that we might have it more abundantly. And of course, we love the scripture in 3, 3 John 2, where it says, Beloved, I wish above all things. One translation says, I pray above all things that John was saying, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. If you look at this from a, uh, and really dissect this particular verse, at the end it says, even as thy soul prospers. So he says, as your soul prospers in him and in his word, 
and who he is. You're seeking first the kingdom of God is righteousness. And he said, all these things will be added unto you. He said, I pray above all things that even as your soul is prospering, that you may prosper and be in health. Health is involved in that. Prosperity involves whatever area in all things and in every way. Take courage, believer. Take courage, man or woman of God. Take courage that God wants you blessed in all ways and in everything. Now, as we begin to close off in this message today, the one thing that, that the Lord wanted me to encourage you during, two, then, during this 2018 is, as you're realizing that God does want you blessed and rich in all things and in every way, that there will be people who make it their business to drop their words and to lock you out of God's blessings. They will lock you out of God's blessing by their perspective, by their way of thinking, that does not have anything to do with the word. They will nullify and just put it out. Look at Mark 7 with me, please. In Mark 7 and verse 13, it says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye. It says, so you cancel, in one translation of that it says, so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. And this is only one example among many others. It says in one translation of Mark 7, 13, by your own rules, which you teach people, you're rejecting what God said, and you do many things like that. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I came to preach the good news to the poor and, and all the blessings. Every, he wants us blessed in every way and all things and in every way. But there'll be people who will lock you up. They will take the key and lock you out with their words. Because they, they, you know, there's a, 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 a thing that the older people used to say about ignorance gone to seed. Ignorance gone to seed. There are people who are ignorant of God and of his ways and of his provisions, not knowing that he has made a covenant with us. The word of God says we have a better covenant based upon better promises. We don't refer many times to the uh, Old and New Testament as the Old and New Covenant. Many people don't, but that's what it is. It's a testament, sure, because the testator had to have died in order for that testament, that will to come into effect. But it is also a covenant. Where God gave his word. He came and ratified a covenant in the blood of his own son. And in his body that was broken to us. That has better promises based upon better things. God through Jesus Christ. We have a covenant by God that he said that heaven and earth would pass away. But his word would not pass away. God has told us I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll supply all your need according to my riches and glory by Christ. The, uh, uh, Christ the anointed Jesus by Christ Jesus God said I'll keep you in perfect peace if you'll keep your mind stayed up on me there all of this is a part what what's the problem many times is is that people have an either or a either or Christianity mentality they sing the song I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold God didn't say that you you can you you have Jesus but you can't have no silver or gold he didn't say that he did not say that. So we, what we have to understand and what we have to realize is, is that there will be people who will drop their words. And it may, I mean, they may sound ever so convincing. They may sound like, but they'll lock you out of the blessings in every area that Jesus gave his life for, made covenant with us in order for us to have and receive. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundantly. So we have to watch out for people who will make the word of none effect. I want you to look at Romans 10 and verse 1 and uh, 1 with me, please. Start at verse 1 to 3. And you need to mark that in your Bibles. In Romans 10, 1 through 3. He said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God, to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He said, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. See, I've talked about ignorance gone to seed. You know what ignorance gone to seed is this? Gone to seed. S-E-E-D. Ignorance gone to seed. People will place their ignorance in you 
and want the ignorant, what they don't even know, that God wants his people to be blessed, that he has made a covenant with us, and he wants us to be blessed in all things and in every way. And they'll lock you out of what God wants you to have. They'll lock you out from believing God for healing, health, and wholeness. They'll lock you out from God providing your needs and meeting your needs and prospering you and blessing you as he did with Abraham. How God made it. It said, God, my, he said, the Lord had blessed my master. The Lord has done this thing. And that the blessing, the word of God says, the blessing of Abraham are ours by and through faith in Jesus Christ. But people will plant their ignorant seeds in you. Because they don't know what the word says about it or their own perspective. What they'll do is they'll use their own perspective and lock you out of God's blessing. Your people have denominational things and they'll ground you in their denominational things or in their religious tenets. One, there's one even uh, one particular religion that won't even let people go in other people's churches at all. Not even for a funeral. Why? Because they don't want them to hear nothing but what they teach them. And there are people that will come and tell you and drop that word. Because it's their own perspective. I, I, I never knew as I watch with people the perspective that people have. Some people have a perspective ain't nobody saved but them. Some people have a perspective that don't nobody know God but them. But there are many people all over the world. I've traveled all over the world. It's a marvelous thing to see the people that love God. And so when we, when we began to look at this, during this time of 2018, don't let anyone lock you out of God's blessing. That, that verse when we read in Romans 10 and verse 1, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, this is the NLT Bible, the, uh, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God. You know, there are people who have a zeal. They have an enthusiasm. But it says, but it is un misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. There are people trying to keep the law right now in order to be brought in the right standing. When God said, by grace are you saved through faith in Jesus Christ. And then there are ones who have a perspective. They're going to they gonna beat you. Some of them are going to try to beat you over the head to keep you from enjoying all that God has provided for us through Jesus Christ. See, he came with good news. Not to lock people away. They'll even have you to, there are people who talk about what they call, quote, the word of faith movement or the charismatic movement or whatever they're saying. That the word of faith, faith is not just a, a movement, it's a way of life. God said in four places in the Bible, the just shall live by faith. And then he went on to say that without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder he, of those who diligently seek him. God, God got reward on every hand. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. That's the God that we serve. He said, come to me. All you that are, are laboring are heavy laden. But people will lock you out of that. Because they want to be like the man when God gave a certain amount of talents to different two, three different people. I think one was five, another was two, and the one was one. And one had a bad perspective. There are people that have a bad perspective of God. And the one that had the bad perspective with that one talent went and buried that one talent. And when, when, when the Lord came looking for the return, he said, I knew you were a hard man. You reap where you have not strong. You strive where you have not gleaned. God is a good God. But that man said, and he said, well, if you knew I was that way, you should have taken what I had and put it to the money changers. We have to understand that there are people who have a bad perspective about God. I remember when Oral Roberts was talking about, uh, had, that God is a good God. In Psalms 146, God is a good God. People got angry. They got mad with him. They wanted to ostracize him simply because he said that God is a good God. Don't let nobody lock you up. 
They'll drop their words and lock you up. Have you shame to believe on God for your finances? Have you shame to, to believe God for your healing, your wholeness, your wellness? Have you shame to go and believe God that he is a deliverer that can set you free in a moment in the twinkling of an eye? Come on now. Let's look at one more about this uh, This Romans 10 and verse 1. In Romans 10 and verse 1, it also says, I, I just really like this one. When it, when it talks about this, he says, brothers and sisters, the thing I want most is for all the Jews to be saved. That is my prayer to God. It says, I can say this about them. They really love God. Do you know that there, there are people who really, and most of the time it's people that really love God, that, that, that have a zeal, but they're ignorant of the word of God and trying to lock people up. I remember as I came up as a young girl, there were many people that that uh, would look and say, well, you're not saved if you wear pants. You're not saved if you wear pants or if you have on a little lipstick or if you have any sleeves, you don't wear sleeves on your garments, uh, that you're, you're not saved. Or even if you braided your hair, they said you weren't saved. And when I began to look into the word of God and I began to find out that it was the blood of Jesus that was required to bring me into right standing with the Father. And that Jesus, it wouldn't have been no need if all I had to do was take a pair of pants and fold them up and put them before him, take a little lipstick and a little nail polish and, and uh, some braids and put it up there and say, will this bring me into right standing with yourself? He would say, no, get that out. I need, he, there was, there had, that's why Jesus had to be born of a virgin Mary. There had to be blood, but there had to be holy blood. Hodrabasia. He sobbed it or no hodrabasia. And that's what Jesus came. He paid the price. For us to be brought into right standing with the Father. And so now I look now that the same people that were very, very hard, very hard on people when, when I was coming up about being what, what it required to be saved. They were locking people out of the kingdom, locking them out, locking them out. Now those very people now wearing pants. I was, I was so amazed to see that. I said, look at this, Lord. I said, after they had gone and knocked us over the head and locked us up, tried to lock us up and, 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 and everything else, they're wearing pants now. And I'm not down in glory to God that they can wear those pants because that has nothing to do with salvation. But it shows the point. They really love God. These are people who really love God. They had a zeal and enthusiasm for God, but not according to knowledge. It's just so they so they did not accept God's way of making people right, but they went about establishing their own way. He said, I know they love God. This and the contemporary English version says, I know they love God, but they don't understand what makes people acceptable to him. So they refuse to trust God and they try to be acceptable by obeying the law. So there are people who will try to lock you up, literally lock you up. In Luke 11 and verse 52, the word of God says in Luke 11, 52, Woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, you hindered. There will be people that will try to hinder you from knowing that God wants you to be blessed in every area, in all things and in every way. That God wants you to be blessed, to be rich in all things and in every way. God wants that for you. Because the blessings of Abraham are ours by and through faith in Jesus Christ. We're blessed with faithful Abraham. And as he made Abraham rich in all things, blessed in all things, he made him great in all things, God says, look unto me. Come unto me. All you that labor are heavy laden. He has an invitation for us to come unto him. Look at Matthew 23 and verse 13. Matthew 23 and verse 13. He said, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. He said, you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. There are people who will lock you away. They'll drop one word. They'll drop a word, and this ignorance gone to seed. They're dropping their seeds of ignorance, and they'll drop that word in your spirit. And many times there are people who get out of here because they, they're, they're entrenched in their doctrinal thing, but not entrenched in faith in who God is. And what he has promised us, what he has made the way for us. We're his children. He's made a covenant with us to bless us so that we may be a blessing unto others in every way, in all ways, in, all, in everything. And it says uh, in Colossians 2 and verse 8, 
Turn there with me. Colossians 2 and verse 8. It says, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. See to it that no one takes you captive. See to it that nobody locks you out of God's blessings. In this year of 2018, we're getting ready for things that God wants to be able to be manifested. He wants to be able to bless you to be a blessing, bless you in your body, bless you in your finances, bless you first and foremost spiritually. He wants to bless you spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, in every way and all things so that you may be blessed to be a blessing unto others. You laying in bed and can't get up and do what you want to do because you, 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 the, you, you don't know. God says, I've already paid the price. My body was broken for you and my blood was shed for you that you might be able to be healed by the stripes of Jesus. I thought about how I've been working on, uh, the Lord gave me an assignment to make 365 movies or videos of reading through the Bible, where you combine the slides that the Lord, the slides of graphic artwork, slides along with the, uh, the readings, the actual readings of, of the Bible. And I began the project December of night of 2015 and just finished this December of 2017. I, I saw something. So, so listen, this is for somebody special as you're listening to this. Listen now. All of a sudden, towards the end, as I got into the end of those movies, I would watch and my legs were just swollen. My legs were just swollen. Looked like I couldn't hardly walk. And my legs were simply waiting to say, well, you've been sitting too long. But I would try to get up and, and I would go there. But my legs would constantly be, just look like it was just, just rough on me. And then... When I finished the very last movie, that, that 365th video of reading through the Bible, when I finished with it, all of a sudden it was like something lifted up off my body. It lifted up off of me, and I looked and I said, I said, look at here. This has lifted up off of me. It reminded me of when I pray. It reminded me of the times when I've gone to pray. And when I prayed, and uh, right before it's time for me to pray, it would seem like just some heavy, like I'm so sleepy, I'm so draggy. And I'd always have to ask the Holy Spirit, help me, oh precious Holy Spirit, so that I may be able to pray as I ought to pray tonight. Because God has need of us. He has need of you. He has need of me so that we may be able to pray so that people's needs might be met. And that he might have somebody who can stand in the gap and make up the hedge. And I often find out that as soon as I finish praying and I've stood in the gap and made up the hedge, immediately that heaven is lifted up off of me. And then I have to pray to go to sleep and to be able to rest. So I saw that while I was doing the work, it was like a legion of, 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 of some kinds of spirits of infirmity had been assigned to me and I didn't even recognize it. So now as I prepare by the Holy Spirit to go into the next uh, this contract that I've, it, to finish out another contract that will take a little while to go through, I come against and bind and break the power in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus of all legions and groups of hindering spirits. And over you that's listening today, I bind and break the power of every hindering spirit from around you. You know, there are people that they call a triple threat. Those are people who can do several things at one time. There are many of you that are listening right now. You are a threat to the enemy. And I bind and break the power of every hindrance that would come against you from going forth in all that God has called you to do. So as we end up in this message tonight, again, the message that God has given for me to minister for this year of New Year, this, this, this 2018 is, is that God wants his people to be blessed, rich in all things and in every way. Now, as I close off on this last little bit, I want to read one more thing that the Holy Spirit gave because, because you know, somebody would say, well, you know, I don't believe God wants them to be rich. I just don't believe it. And I don't believe that God wants us. Now, this is what the Word of God says. Go with me to uh, 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. And look with me at verse 17, 6 and verse 17. I'm going to take my time, but I'm going to end in, after this verse. I'm getting ready to end. But I want to read this in your hearing. Because if God wants us to be blessed and rich in all things and in every way, then we got to know how to handle ourselves and be rich in all things and in every way. 
So those of us who are embracing and say, yes, Lord, I thank you for your blessing. Remember what he says. He says in, in 1 Timothy 6 and 17, it says, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. Don't be high-minded now. Nor trust in uncertain riches. We're not to trust in those riches. That's why when he tells us to give, we give. When he tells us to do, we do. But in the living God who giveth us, now look, this, I did, this is not Helen Price verse, uh, 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 what is this, uh, chapter verse 6 and verse, uh, 17. No, this is 1 Timothy 6 and verse 17. He says what? He says, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. God says, don't be high minded. Don't trust in those uncertain riches because I'm the one that gives you and I'm the one who gives you richly all things to enjoy. Remember, Romans 8.32 says, if God gave his son for us, how would he not with him also freely give us all things? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And then he said, laying up in store for themselves, verse 19 of that, of that sixth verse, uh, says, uh, sixth chapter, laying up for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. You remember when he talked to the, to the Philadelphia church in the book of Revelations, he commended them. And then he said, now hold fast to that which you have, that no man take your crown. See, when you're in that place where you're blessed to be a blessing, you've got to stay close to the Lord. You've got to keep on holding on to him and hold fast. God wants you blessed in every area, every single area. But he don't want you to thumb your nose at him because he knows if you walk out from his umbrella protection, you have an enemy whose job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I came that you might have life. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And in another translation of that same verse in First uh, Timothy 6 and 17, it says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. He richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need always ready to share with others. It says, by doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. I'm going to read it out of another translation for you. I'm doing this so that you can get it down in your spirit. Here it says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. Now in the King James it says, tell them don't be high-minded. In, the, in another translation, it said, tell them don't be proud. This translation says, tell, them, tell those who are rich in this present world to not be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Because I'm going to tell you, when you've got all your needs met and you've got the exceeding abundant above and you can buy everything and do all that you have, people can get very proud and arrogant and high-minded. And God says, I don't want you high-minded. I want you to richly enjoy. It says, uh, we, he wants us to put our hope in him and God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. And this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Then it goes over here and says, warn the rich. This is in another translation of the CV. Warn the rich people of this world not to be proud and to trust in wealth that is easily lost. Tell them to have faith in God who is rich and blesses us with everything we need to enjoy life. Instruct them to do as many good deeds as they can. Listen, God wants to bless you to be a blessing so that you can do as many good deeds as you can and to help everyone. Remind the rich to be generous and share what they have. This will lay a solid foundation for the future so that they will know what true life is like. The last one is, I think that's a little bit like the first one. So I won't read out this NCV. I'll, I'll leave that one on there because it's really saying the same, same thing as, as some of the others have said. But as we close off today, we just, I just want to remind you during this, the, this broadcast and to say to you one more time that God 
wants you to be blessed, rich in all things, in every way. He said, I did it for Abraham. I blessed him. I made his name great. I blessed him to be a blessing unto others. And God said, that's what I want to do for you. I want to do the very same thing. Don't let anybody lock you up. Don't let anybody close the door to what Jesus has already provided for us in this better covenant that is based upon better promises. So as we come today and as we close out today, I want you to repeat with me today. So Lord, I thank you. Yes, say that with me. Lord, I thank you that you want me to be blessed and rich in all things and in every way. Spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for praying that with me. And remember, I've heard Joel Osteen and John Osteen say this for many years, and I, I believe it to be so. He takes that Bible and says, this is my Bible. Take your Bible. Get your Bible. Or if you don't, lay your hand on the machine, because now we use a lot of the computers. So this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I can have what it says I can have. This is the year that we've got to remember that here in 2018. We've got to be one so rooted and grounded in the fact that we have a good God that wants to bless us. He wants us to be a part of what he's doing in this earth realm. He wants us to be a part of reaching the lost and dying. He said he gives us that power to get wealth that his covenant may be confirmed and established as he swore to our fathers as it is this day. God wants you to be blessed, to be a blessing unto someone else in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Father God, for your word today, which has truly been a lamp unto our feet and a light into our pathway. Your word have we hid in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. We thank you for this new year of 2018, Father God. And we thank you for this particular portion of the word that has been tailor-made for those you've had to listen today and for myself. I thank you, Father God, for this tailor-made message, Lord God, that you want us to be blessed and rich in all things and in every way. Thank you for that scripture, Lord God, in Genesis 24, 35. Thank you for Genesis 24 and verse 1 and 2. Thank you, Father God. That you're a God that blessed Abraham and we are of the seed of Abraham who is Jesus Christ and you bless us, Lord God. You make us the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Lord God, you open unto us your windows of heaven, pouring us out blessings that there shall not even be room enough to receive it. And we love you today. Bless every man, woman, boy, and girl this day who would listen even unto this word, Lord God. Help them, Lord God, to overcome any words that somebody has spoken out to them. Any words, Father God, that would say what they can't be, what they can't have, or what they can't do in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Encourage their hearts, Father God, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And we give you all praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Father God. And we give you thanks in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. If you've made it this far and listening to this particular message for 2018 and uh, you're not a believer, you're not, you're not even a Christian, or if you desire to make sure that you are a Christian or, and you want to be a Christian, I want to invite you this day to ask Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life that all the blessings that he has provided through his body that was broken and his blood that was shed might be yours. The word of God said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might have life through him. And then he says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you would be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then he tells each one of us to repent. We're to return, uh, have a change of heart, change of mind, turn away from sin and turn to God. If you would like to ask Jesus into your heart and life today, please pray with me right now. I want you to repeat this with me. Because Christianity has been called the great confession. He says, if you confess me before men, 
I will confess you before my Father which is in heaven. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father which is in heaven. So come on, let's pray together and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, that's right, dear Lord Jesus, this day I ask you to come into my heart, to come into my life. I repent this day of all of my sins. This day I do believe, Lord Jesus, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I do believe that God raised you from the dead. This day I commit my life to you. I dedicate myself to you. Reveal yourself to me, Lord Jesus, and I thank you this day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, today I commit and commend you into the word of God's grace. that's able to keep you, guard, defend, and preserve, and protect you. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for this one. In Jesus' name. Amen.